says that give to God what is God's. And you think about it, it's why we are here. It's the basic reason why we come here to Mass on the weekend, either Saturday night or Sunday morning. To give to God what belongs to God. To give God, you could say, what's His due. To give God what He deserves. Namely, our love, our thanks, our praise, our worship. Ultimately, our very selves. They were trying to trap Jesus and He looks at that Roman coin and says, Repay to Caesar what is Caesar's. And to God what is God's. It's one of the great one-liners that Jesus had. So I want to reflect on that what's owed to God in terms of the the, the, the readings that we have at the beginning of Mass. See, every, every time we gather for Mass, it should be a moment of real delight for us. A moment of joyful anticipation that we as a church get to listen to God speak to the church. Not just to each of us individually, but to the church. See, the church gathers here to listen to its book. The church and the Bible are interdependent and interconnected. You don't have a Bible without the church. And so we come here as spiritually hungry individuals, yes? We're all ultimately spiritually needy people. We may not want to admit that, but we are. And so when we gather here, we are a hungry church. And the words of this book are our food and drink. Ultimately, our food and drink is the Eucharist that we're offered at Mass. But we cannot diminish the vital importance that the Word of God is for our sanctification for our very life as a church. <clears throat> you often tell the students at St. Mary's that the first form of love is to give another our attention. That's really important when you're a student to give your teacher your attention. And it's a way of showing love. It's also the same thing where we're in a conversation with a group of people. To give the one speaking our attention is that first form of love. I mean, how can we reach out to another in love unless we give them our attention? So when we gather here for Mass, particularly for the beginning of Mass, the first form of love is to give God our attention. To really listen to His Word. You know, before Mass, we know that the church asks us that we don't eat for one hour before communion. That we fast from everything except water and necessary medicine. Which also, by the way, means no gum. But this fast for one hour before a communion is really just a symbolic act. It's not a real fast. You know, one hour, it's nothing. <laughs> but it symbolizes that we come here hungry, hungry for God, hungry for God's Word, hungry for being connected with God, for communion with God. And communion does not happen only through the Eucharist. That's, yes, our most powerful way. But it also happens through a, a union of our minds with a common truth. A truth which is proclaimed especially powerfully.
powerfully through God's Word and is taught through the centuries by the church. So this, this sacred text, the Bible, as I said, comes from the church. And we carry with us a book that our parents and our ancestors entrusted to us and which we will entrust to our children. We read and pray with it when we're alone. We read and pray with it as a household, with family, with friends. We read and pray with it in small groups. But we always read and pray with it when we gather for worship. That reading, that proclaiming of God's Word is the church's nourishment. It gives us our identity. It gives us life. Yeah, because we, we, we're in such a Protestant culture, we tend to approach the Bible with a very Protestant mentality. That you know, when we read the Bible, it's, we read it like, what is in it, what's in it for me? What is God saying to me? And that's one way to read it. But that's not the fullest way to read it. Here at Mass, the word is for the church. For us as the body of Christ. And you and I listen because we are part of the church. And you and I listen because if I don't listen well, the church is diminished. We listen as the word is proclaimed because the word is Jesus. Jesus is the word made flesh. And we're supposed to cling to these words. To cling to them like life itself. That's truly what they are. You know, we're doing this Eucharistic revival on Sunday mornings, and two weeks ago we heard from Ben Burleson, who was teaching us about how to, to, to read and pray with the sacred scripture. You know, these, uh, these mornings that we have together, I encourage you to participate. Someone said the other day, they said, well, you know, I already believe in the Eucharist, I already trust what the church teaches. That's not the only reason we're having Eucharistic revival. The church is calling us to deepen our amazement at the gift of the Eucharist and to grow in our communion as the body of Christ. One of the ways we do that is by sharing our faith together, by breaking bread together. So after every Mass we have food, we have reflections today, this Sunday, um, Derek Roddy is going to share with us some insights and how the history of salvation helps prepare us and helps us to understand the gift of the Eucharist. And so it's a way that we grow together in our communion with one another and thereby our communion with God. You know, our lectors, when they proclaim God's Word, when our deacons or our priests proclaim God's word at Mass, we're challenged to pour over the scriptures before we get up here to do that. To read, to pray over them, to practice even proclaiming it out loud. It's really difficult and demanding work. The lectors don't simply walk up here and open the book and see what they're supposed to read that day as, as they approach the, 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 the ambo. At least they're not supposed to. See, we live in a sea of words, through the radio, through the TV, and most of them just flow right past us. We're not really good at, at, at attentive listening, are we? See, at Mass, we need to cultivate a habit of good, hard listening. Not just hearing, but really, truly listening. For God wants to speak to you and me. God gathers us here that He might speak to us through the prayers of the Mass, through the Eucharist, but especially through His Word. Jesus often asked those He was speaking to, do you have ears to hear? Or He might say, you, don't, you do not have ears to hear. 
Yet the Latin word, root of the word obedience, is simply to listen. We can never be obedient to God and His will if we have not first listened to Him. So, will we give God what He is owed? Will we open our hearts, our ears, our minds, our souls, our very self to Him and truly listen? Because if we truly listen to God's Word and to His truth, then we will know how to be both good citizens of heaven <coughs> and good citizens of the world.